Hi. If you could welcome from the uh, from the film Emma Doyle, the costume designer. Yeah. Come on up. Yeah. Melanie Garris, the production designer. Yeah. Lev Lewis, editor and composer. He's on, keep going? Okay, uh, fr producers, uh, Katie Bird Nolan and Lindsay Tapscott. Oh, there's Lev. <laughs> and Karen Harnish. Karen Harnish! From the cast, a phenomenal cast, Connor Jessup. Yeah. Thomas Aligide. Okay. Oh. Amber Anderson. Casey Roll. Co-directors Yona Lewis and Calvin Thomas. A lot of them. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Qu questions? <laughs> Comments? Congratulations. Thanks so much. <laughs> Maybe something more complex? Anyone? Well, so, pardon me? Will there be a second part? Are you make me shave my head again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we like where we, where we left. Yeah. Do you want to talk about... How, for sure. Do you want to talk a bit, of, a bit about how the project started, where the idea came from? Yeah, sure. Uh, it, I mean, it just came from hearing real-life stories across North America and... Uh, uh, and the world of people faking illnesses. It's been something that's been around for a long time. Um, it seems to have increased with GoFundMe, fundraising sites, social media. A lot of people um, in cases hide behind a laptop. So they are telling lies, posting things on social media websites, but they're not, but, but they're sort of keeping themselves protected uh, and not doing something as extreme as our character does. Um, but of course we were drawn to the more dramatic more extreme cases where people would alter their appearance or or change their physicality um, that and those cases do exist as well and that that just seemed like a fascinating character something that really intrigued us yeah I, I think right away we realized that people weren't making that much money from this it wasn't a sort of get rich quick scheme uh, and so we were starting to try to just I don't know, investigate exactly what it was that was drawing people to do this, what they were getting out of it exactly. And we, we, weren't, we weren't certain at first, and we had to do a bit of research before we figured that out. So was someone right there? Oh, sorry. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, right there. Good question. When you did your research, were, are there, were there a lot of cases of doctors helping or, you know, collaborating in the, the way they did in the film? I, as far as I know, we made that up. I mean, I'm sure it's happened in real life. Um, but, but no, uh, we didn't come across that. Uh, the majority of the actual events that happen are completely our, of our own making. Uh, it was just this initial idea of somebody faking cancer. Um, to defraud people. That was, that was we, where we started. We found a lot of doctors, though, that did insurance fraud. So there's a line in there that kind of comes from that, where they would they would just sort of false diagnose uh, just so that they could claim insurance. That happens a lot in the States. Um, and we it had, happens a lot here, too. There was like a huge TTC fraud insurance right, right, case yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. So it, um, it, it happens all over the place. We consulted with a few doctors about faking medical records and, and doing the process. And luckily, our consultants uh, really had to do their research because they didn't know how to do it. So they were quite uh, <laughs> they were they were good people. Yeah. That's what they told you. <laughs> right there. Yep. Question was: If it wasn't money that motivated the people who did these types of frauds, what what was motivating them? Do you want to talk about that one? Oh, you want me to jump in? <laughs> um. <laughs> Gosh, well, I think we touch on it in there that there was obviously a big trauma in her life. Um, someone who was very ill and uh, left the planet, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I think, it, I can only speak to Katie, but in, in her mind, um, in some dark and twisty way, she saw uh, an incredibly ill person 
receiving love and attention of a particular brand. Um, and then when that person left really suddenly, they left a hole in her life and, uh, you know, having a parent who kills themselves is an incredibly traumatic experience. Um, and so in some backdoor way to get love and fill the hole and, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think that we ever thought it was one individual thing. I think mm -hmm. we attempted to seed in a, a whole bunch of different factors, mm -hmm. contributing factors. And obviously what Casey's speaking to is one of them. Yeah. Um, we felt it was a little cut and dry to say it was this one specific event that led to <laughs> this. Uh, so, so we just tried to say it was a bunch of different things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right here. How did you uh, cast the, uh, how did you <laughs> assemble the cast? This amazing cast. I yeah, have. I mean, it took a long time. Um, we did a lot of auditioning. Casey's from Vancouver, so she sent in a tape. Um, and, I taped uh, it in my kitchen. You did. It was. It look, honestly looked like the Blair Witch Project because she, <laughs> she had hair at that time, of course, and uh, and she had a toque on, and it was like you know, yeah, in your kitchen. I really and went to. I like contoured my cheeks to like a yeah, scary no, level. Yeah, no, but and, you and, looked really and, shitty. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> and it was an in, it was an intense audition, and I think what at least for Casey, we were so drawn to was just how far you went with it, and then we got a we we did another taping and. We saw uh, you do it in a different way, and it was just clear to us. It's a big cast. I think there's about 30, 31 speaking parts, uh, some of whom I think are here. Um, it, uh, it took a long time casting, and we were, we were two weeks into production, and we were, st we were still casting. So it's not ideal, but uh, yeah. I, I think we cast Amber on the first day of shooting. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. So we were already shooting, and our producers came up to us and said, Amber said yes. Um, and then we had to fly her in from the UK. Um, so it was it was just a crazy hodgepodge of finding people wherever we could, finding the right people for each role, and it took a long, 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 long time. Um, yeah, right there. Uh, could you, uh, the gentleman was thinking about delusion and the many choices that Katie's character makes along the way. And he wanted to know specifically about that moment where she says, if you don't want me to be sick anymore, I won't be. And if you could talk about the thinking that went behind that or how that felt or. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for us that we, early on in the script, I think we knew we wanted her to tell the truth at some point. And that, that being at the very end, I think is, is sort of the right moment for it. So uh, in a very roundabout way, I think she just like, I mean, she's been through a lot, so I think she wants out. And uh, and for us, that's her her way of saying like, I fucked up, but like, can you help me through this fuck up? Which one of you won the bet? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to talk about how you approach that moment? Yep, sure. Um, <laughs> here you go. Hello. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, I can't speak for your character, but um, the thing I loved the most about Jen is her loyalty and how she's kind of capable of a quite pure kind of love that not everybody is actually. And, and so I wonder if perhaps it's a thing of you thinking, maybe I actually would stay around. A hundred percent. Like that's where the delusion twists, like again, is that I think I can tell her everything that's, that I've done. And that she'll be like, 100%, I'm on side, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think what we were talking about at the beginning, in many ways, Katie, is, it's, it's like being in a relationship with an addict. And I think those of us who have been in relationships with addicts, we know that feeling of staying in something kind of probably longer than we should because we really hope that they will come through for us and that they will um, achieve what we believe is their potential. And so I think that is Jen's moment of going, well, am I just going to stick with this person or not? And I think she chooses, in my opinion, the right choice. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, is this, where's the, the gentleman whose question I saw? Did you, yeah. Well, I was just going to ask, what was the thing with making this movie 
what was something new uh, you, you, in the film that you hadn't done before? I shaved my head. Casey was so excited to shave her head. I really was. Yeah. I'd been wanting to do it for a really long time, and I was really pumped up, and they let me do it, which was great. And I think we did it within 24 hours of meeting each other in person. Yeah. We you don't really have a proper memory of me with hair. No, no, not at all. Not long hair. No. And this is even weird for you now. Yeah, yeah. you look like a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, all, we're both just very used to Casey looking the way that we all just saw her. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the rest I, of you look like what I expect you to look like. Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, this is a, a bit of a step up in terms of our usual production. We've, over the last couple of years, made some fairly small scale productions. So kind of every day was a, was a bit of a new thing, new thing to discover. Um, we had a very big crew and uh, it was just a different way of working, but it allowed us to do some things that we've always wanted to do, like shoot on film and, and, and block in a way and shoot in a way that we, you just, it's, it's very hard to with a small crew. So it was a, every day was a, a, like kind of a new experience for us. So, yeah. I just have to mention Chris Liu, our amazing uh, DOP is not here tonight, but I think His we should shout him out. His flight got canceled. His flight got canceled, which sucks, but he did such amazing work. I just want to shout him out real quick. That does look great. Um, I think you've been waiting for a while. Go. Yeah, I have a question do you want to talk about being a composer and an editor as well? Sure, yeah. I guess I don't really think about it that much um, because I've been doing it with Yona and Calvin for so long now. Um, and editing just feels like an extension of all the work that we do. Of just I'm there for all aspects of casting and script and stuff. So it's like, it just kind of feels like a normal thing to do. The part that is intense is when we uh, actually lock picture and then I have like four weeks to compose and produce and do all of the music. And with, I mean, this is a high budget film for us, but it's still a low budget film and we never have enough time and enough resources really to do everything that you want. So that's the moment when you start to think, holy crap, I've been putting this off for too long. Um, <laughs> and maybe I should only do one of these things. <laughs> um, but they just feel like extensions of each other and both are such, uh, so based on rhythm too. Like they're just really, really similar things in my mind. Right, we'll squeeze in the last one and then we got to wrap it up, sorry. Uh, uh, for all the cash no. transactions, was it, did you, were you ever tempted to use American money instead of Canadian? No, the movie's shot in Hamilton. We wanted to set it in Hamilton. Uh, we, I think there's sometimes a, a fear to be a Canadian movie and to show Canadian dollars and because maybe it's goofy, but uh, you know, I, but I, I think it's I think it's better if you don't try to hide that and try to pretend that we're in some vague American city. I think, uh, yeah, righteous. Our noblest move. <laughs> well, thank you guys. What inspired you to portray the Katie in such a sympathetic light? Why did you make Katie such a sympathetic, sympathetic character? Um, uh, I had to. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't think, I don't know. I think it's... Uh, in order to uh, keep people watching the movie and to like be along with the ride and not be like watching a journey of an awful human being with no redeeming qualities um, is like not what we were trying to do, I think. Um, and I just, yeah, I, had, I, I weirdly reading the script was like, I get how she got there. I don't, I, I don't encourage it, I don't approve of it, but I, I get it. So even, I don't know if, the, I guess it's a brand of sympathy, but. I, I think when writing it, we knew that she was doing something despicable. I don't think we were shying away from that in any way. I, and I think that she does a lot of really obviously shitty things yeah. all the way through beyond the big picture shitty things she's doing. Um, but I don't think she would be interesting if you disliked her all the way through. I don't think you'd be wanting to watch the movie if she was completely dislikable. And 100% of that credit goes to Casey. Thank you. Well, I, I think that's really what makes the fact that you, you make the, uh, an unsympathetic character, you, you have to stay with her and, and in some ways empathize with her is what, that's the real courage of the film. That's like a fundamental thing to it. Uh, congratulations. Thank, Thank you guys Steve. for coming. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for the film. And remember to vote.